They slobber, they slash, they stalk. They don't think they kill. Tonight, lunatics on the loose. So run for your lives tonight on USA's Real Wild Cinema. Welcome back. I'm Sandra Bernhard, the voluptuous girl you just saw in the cartoon. This is Lunatics on the Loose Night here on Real Wild Cinema, where we salute low-budget exploitation films of the 50s and 60s. So you might ask, what's the difference between our films and the films made today? About $40 million and a sense of humor. After all, laugh and the world laughs with you, cry and your lover will dump you, tell you you're weak and vulnerable and hideous. I'm sure you've heard of the Aztec mummy, or the robot versus the Aztec mummy, or even the soon-to-be-released Sandra Bernhardt goes to third base with the Aztec mummy, starring me, Sandra Bernhardt, and Antonio Banderas as the Aztec mummy. Mmm, yummy. Our first flick tonight is Curse of the Aztec Mummy, not to be confused with my version. It was made in 1959 in Mexico by Rafael Portillo. Enjoy Curse of the Aztec Mummy. Again, we've condensed our films tonight for your viewing pleasure. The gods, we made it to the lower temple. So cheap. it's marvelous. <gasps> Did you hear that? Yes, a strange noise. Maybe it was the wind. No, it's Tessa Mock. Calm down, Professor. You're a little nervous, no. that's all. No, come before it's too late.
the mummy again. Before he gets away. the end of our search. Who can tell how many centuries more the Aztec treasure will remain hidden? Man, was that title character versatile or what? He's a vampire, a mummy, a vampire, a mummy. So why are all these people still searching for the Aztec treasure? Don't you think when the Spanish conquistadors overthrew the Aztec rulers, they pocketed every last piece of gold? I dated a conquistador years ago. Believe me, it wasn't pretty. Don't go away. We've got a film with really bad dubbing coming up next. Our next lunatic flick was produced in 1964, and it looks like it was shot before they even had breakfast. This sexy shocker is about a gardener who drinks from a stream that is polluted with bad chemicals, so of course he turns into a slobbering lunatic who heads straight for a nudist colony. Why not? I know that's the first place I would go. The movie I'm talking about is The Monster of Camp Sunshine, and it holds the distinction to be the only production ever to intercut stock Civil War footage with scenes from a nudist colony. You might have to sleep with the lights on after watching the Monsters of Camp Sunshine. tried all kinds of experiments on the rats. Those chemicals that were sitting on the shelf were, it was a million to one shot. Some combination of substances that made the animals vicious, inhuman. I don't think it could ever happen again. And I thank the great surgeon in the sky that it happened to rats and didn't happen to human beings. 
Thank the good Lord we've got scientific techniques to get rid of vile, vicious substances like that. That's all that's left of the monster of Camp Sunshine. This film makes you think twice about drinking anything but bottled water from Switzerland. And what about the acting? My brother's a monster! I don't think Camp Sunshine will ever be the same. I think I played there once with Mitch, my piano player. I wish someone would have told me the clothing was optional. We're going to break for a commercial. When we come back, we'll visit with a very special guest and play part one of our feature flick, The Bloody Pit of Horror.
He's an actor, a musician, an eclectic. He, he does it all. And he's on a very cool show, Duck Man, right here on USA. He had a very cool dad, Frank Zappa. Our guest is Dweezil Zappa. Thank you. So you're a, an aficionado on, on movies. What's your favorite? <sighs> well, I like bad movies in general, but uh, I think probably uh, my favorite, perhaps you've seen it, The Oscar. The Oscar? You've never seen The Oscar? Is it Oscar? a sexploitation film? Well, in some ways, <laughs> some yes, ways. but... Uh, like the Oscar is in the Academy Award oh, yeah, Oscar? Oh, yeah, Well, I mean, if you can imagine, I mean, there's this one actor who is just brilliant named Stephen Boyd. He's my all-time favorite. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Stephen Boyd. I'm he, sure I've seen him. He's the master of overdoing it. Uh-huh. OTT. <laughs> yeah. Way OTT. Yes, yes. Uh, so anyway, uh, basically, you know, long story short, he, he's a con man who turns into an actor whose career takes a nosedive, but then is brought back by an Academy Award nomination, and then he's willing to kill to get the Oscar. Well, then it is kind of sexploitation. Yeah, I'm but sure there's it's, sex involved too. it's got Tony Bennett's uh, film debut. Oh, wow. With fine dialogue, like he spent the night in an alley sleeping on a cardboard box, and he's like, and I was lying there, Frankie, twitching, just like a spastic, Frankie. And then he runs out of the room, and he hits the wall as he's leaving, and the whole wall shakes. Well, that sounds super scary. I, I don't great. know if it's as scary as the Curse of the Aztec Mummy, but I mean, well, what did you think of the Curse of the Aztec Mummy? By the uh, way? Well, it scared me. You know, it, it's, uh, I'm sh I'm shaking. My my yeah. my whole house is shaking right now I, from the experience. I felt real bad for him, you know, because like you know, he's he's been he's asleep a for like yeah, a million years or whatever. But you know, he had a way with the ladies. Well, they all did in those movies, you know. That's yeah. the beauty of it. Yeah, he's still got it though. He's looking good, you know. But I, I think the still uh, got it. I think the bandages <laughs> and and all. He is still hot. Yeah, you know it. And the broads just go nuts yeah, for him. Yeah, he's got no troubles. Hey, uh, honey. But he uh, he does have a kooky way of turning into a bat, you know. <laughs> It's like, uh, he's like, can't decide, am I a bat or a mummy? Bat, mummy, bat, I don't know, mummy. You, you wonder where they dr dreamt it up, you know? Uh, yeah. Where worlds collide and never meet. <laughs> Bats and mummies. Yeah, it makes you know? perfect sense. It's kind of an attraction repulsion thing all at once. That's the, yeah. what the beauty of these movies. Yeah, well, it's like the same thing they do with TV sitcoms, where they think that, you know, people like babies and dogs, and then they stick them all in there because they're trying to guess what the public wants. So they were guessing what the public was afraid of. Bats and mummies. I love that concept so much better, though. Wouldn't it be better if t television scared people <laughs> instead of trying to endear themselves? Well, I think it does. I mean, Charles in Charge. <laughs> well, and ultimately other... it does, but yeah. <laughs> not with quite the same je ne sais quoi I know it. of the Aztec mummy. Let's call a spade a spade. It's gorgeous. Now, do you want to hang out and watch our, our feature? Sure do. Because I'm not letting you go, because the Aztec mummy has just turned into a bat, and he's going to swoop down and, like, <laughs> nest in your hair. For you. He's going to put that gold <laughs> necklace on, lie you down all nice and pretty. <laughs> Woo! Get some nice Egyptian oils. You know it. All right, we're going to go to our feature, and we're going to come back after. In 1964, Jane Mansfield and her husband, muscle man Mickey Hargitay, went to Italy to film the classic primitive love. But as you're about to see, Mickey is just too much man for one movie. So at the same time, he shot tonight's feature, The Bloody Pit of Horror. Mickey dresses up in nothing but red tights and a mask and has some real dialogue gems like, they desecrated your world of beauty with their sordidness. The day of the crimson executioner has come. Good job, Mickey. Enjoy. <laughs> Ah, not bad. This seems exactly what we've been looking yeah. for. From here, it looks great. Just what we need. You'd have to be a creep to live in a place like this. Hey, what a funny place this is. Looks like a Frankenstein film set. Rose! Rose! Rose? <gasps> oh! Oh! You idiot! Why, Mr. 
you play these childish jokes all the time? Raoul. Raoul. Take off that silly costume. <gasps> These uninhabited castles always have their family skeleton. Uninhabited? There's not a trace of dust around here. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm very sorry. Nobody answered the doorbell and we thought the castle was empty. Could we speak to the owner? Stop where you are. How dare you force your way into my castle like this? What do you want here? I want to apologize. We didn't think anyone lived here, that's all. It's no excuse for trespassing. I don't like having my privacy disturbed. I'm sorry, sir. You're quite right. My name is Parks. I'd like to explain. We've been scouting for suitable locations to photograph material for book jackets. I'm a publisher. That's no concern of mine. I insist that you leave my castle immediately. On your feet, everybody. We've been told to shove off. The master of the house doesn't like having visitors around. Edith. Wait. Perhaps I was a little too hasty, Mr. Parks. I'm not usually so inhospitable. I realize you must all be very tired. You can stay here overnight, but I'll have to ask you to leave first thing in the morning. Do you mind if we take a few pictures? Bottle wine, they call it. It tastes like water. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? But I know where we can find a real wine. I discovered where the cellar is. Come on, I'll show you. See ya. Come on, Harry. knock. Oh, come on. Now, what's all this nonsense? I'm just like a father to you girls. Turn around. We have to get into our costumes. <sighs> okay, have your little games, but hurry up. We haven't any time to fool around. We've got work to do. Too daring. No. I bet Max will like it. He always does. They desecrated your world of beauty with their sordidness. The day of the Crimson Executioner has now come. Everything's ready, Dermot. Can I go? Not more than a few minutes, though. Time's running short. You bet. Come on, Susie. Don't call me like that. Then come on. But where? Oh, come on. Okay, I'm all set. Everybody out of the way. That's right. Hold that pose, Perry. Don't move. I'll be done in a minute. Now, here we go. Perry! Oh, no! Raoul, didn't you hear that yell? I didn't hear anything at all. Come along. Where are you taking? You'll find out. Look at that. 
What is it? I don't know. Maybe it was an old torture cell. You know these old castles. <laughs> Nothing in it. Let me alone, Raoul. I'm scared. Susie. Susie. What are you doing here? I want you to see what I found. I'm sure you recognize it. Edith, what's your portrait doing in this castle? Then you do know the owner. Yes, Travis and I were engaged. Travis Anderson. Isn't he the actor who disappeared several years ago? Yes, he used to be a muscle man in costume film. In all this time, I haven't stopped wondering why he ever disappeared like that. We've got to reach the others. It's important that we all stay together. But what's going on? I don't understand. Kinuyo. <laughs> Kinuyo! Back with more from the bloody pit of horror after this. We're back. Ready for another shot of that poor woman caught in that diabolical trap? If I walked in and a friend of mine was caught in one of those, I'd have to say, love you, honey, but I can't deal with this right now. Then I'd run away and have a delicious dinner. Does that make me selfish? Enjoy part two of the bloody pit of horror. You know you. Watch out, Rick. Don't try to get any closer to me or you'll get killed. Don't you see? It's a diabolical trap. It's impossible for anyone to reach me. These wires are connected to the bows on the wall. The slightest touch will release the arrows in every direction, and anyone nearby will be killed. Nobody can stop the mechanism that operates. The spider, it has poison in its claws. I'll be killed the moment it reaches me. Now it's hopeless. Watch out, Rick. Rick, your jacket's caught! It's no use. It's too late. Rick. Find the others. Hurry up. You've got to get out of the castle at once. At once. No. No, Rick. No. Not without you. Do what I tell you. Go away, Edith. Go away. 
Don't worry about me. Derbert will be back here soon with the police. Travis. Don't come any nearer. Don't touch me. You were the murderer. Now I know it, Travis. How could you? You're a monster! A monster! No. Oh. Mankind is made up of inferior creatures. Spiritually and physically deformed. Who would have corrupted the harmony of my perfect body. Travis, you've lost your sanity. You're an egotist. Obsessed with your sick thoughts. I know of only one who was never overcome by weakness. The Crimson Executioner. And now, last, you'll witness the glory of his return. And you'll pay just like the others. <laughs> for your lechery. The Crimson Executioner will torture you. Yes, will torture you. Till death. Just a small portion of the torture that awaits you. Edith. 
Rick. My body. My pure body. Has been contaminated. The body of the crimson executioner. Striking resemblance. It was terrible. Please take me away from this castle. It was a nightmare. See? That's what happens when you try to impersonate the Crimson Executioner. But did the girl in the web have to die such a hideous death? The man responsible for this masterpiece, Massimo Pupolo, changed his name to the more American-sounding Max Hunter when he visited the U.S. When I go to Europe, I've thought about changing my name to Sunny Spain. For professional reasons, I still might. Go get a vial of green blood, and I'll show you what to do with it when we get back. We're back with Dweezil Zappa. Now, I know you've never made a low-budget picture before, but I, I think you've had some really miserable television experiences. Who hasn't? Before you tonight, before this, which oh, this was, is, this this is, is mellow. beautiful. So but, tell me what uh, that's about. Well, we did this show, me and my sister Moon did this show called Normal Life for CBS, which was uh, hilariously bad. It, it was supposed to be uh, much better. We, we felt we were in thespian penitentiary while we were doing it. It was total career suicide. So um, you, you're creating your own band, your own music, and, and you have a uh -huh. new um, album called um, music, music for, for Pets. Pets. Which yeah. I, you told me you have a really cool commercial for? Yeah, it's got Robert Wagner and Cindy Crawford. RJ? You know it. He's, he's so <laughs> awesome in it. Just, I bet he... It, just having him introduce himself, you oh, know, he's it's totally perfect. totally cool. Yeah, he just says, he's awesome. Hi, I'm Robert Wagner. And he's got the suit and the tie, and he's standing there with his horse and the CD. It's awesome. <laughs> Well, I know it's going to go through the roof. Oh, yeah. Thank and I'm going to get it from my, all my favorite animals, you know too. It. You got you it. Know? Well, you're a sweetheart. Thanks Thank for coming you. on, honey. <laughs> Exploitation filmmakers were always thinking. They didn't have the big stars and huge advertising budgets that lured people to mainstream films. So they had to pull some creative stunts to get people excited about their films. William Castle wired theater seats with electric charges when he screened The Tingler. David Friedman handed out vomit bags for blood feast. They should have tried that with Mary Riley. When our next flick, Green Blood Oath, played, theaters handed out little vials of green liquid to protect the audience from, well, see for yourself. The green blood potion has been known to passionately affect some people after drinking it. Others experience a feeling of the supernatural conscience entering their beings. Get your samples of the green blood potion ready and recite the oath of Dr. Lorca aloud with me before drinking of the green blood. I, a living, breathing creature of the cosmic entity, I'm now ready to enter the realm of those chosen to be allowed to drink of the mystic emerald fluids herein offered. I join the order of green blood with an open mind and through this liquid's powers, I'm now prepared to safely view the unnatural green-blooded ones without fear of contamination. Now, drink your sample of green blood and it is guaranteed that you can never turn into a green-blooded monster. Did I fail to mention that the green blood also makes you horny? Sorry. Stick around if you can. So you ever wonder how these clever filmmakers lure audiences in to see the original cuts of such bad films? Remember, we are only showing you the good parts. The bad parts we cut out. They did it just like the big studios do today. Trailers. 
But instead of giving away all the best jokes and plot twists like they do today, these filmmakers produce really bizarre coming attraction trailers with warnings like, any volunteers will be decapitated with a meat cleaver. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna rush out and see that. Here they come. What was the strange secret which lay concealed behind the forbidden doors of the Castle of Blood? The scream of the demon lover. It may be the last sound you hear. For five centuries, it waited beneath the earth, held captive by a mountain of stone. No, you don't think he could still be alive. If he were, it could explain a lot of things that have been happening. It's impossible. He's been dead at least 500 years. So was that lizard I found. Suddenly, in a flash of fate, nature unleashed this horrendous monster. The nightmare giant who held all civilizations in a paralyzing grip of fear. Man was powerless against this creeping terror. Bullets could not stop it. And only human life could satiate its bloodlust. Beware, its cold look of death is watching you now. For the first time on stage, the fourth dimension. Can it be true that any volunteer will be decapitated with a meat cleaver? See it, hear it, and actually feel it. <laughs> Unbelievable, but true. 13, 14, 15 knives will be driven through the head of any unsuspecting person. If there is anyone left, after the crawling thing from planet 13 creeps over the audience seeking fresh human blood. I know you're very sad that I have to go, but look at the bright side. I'll be back next week with more classic exploitation films from the 50s and 60s. And more of me, Sandra Bernhard, your hostess of USA's Real Wild Cinema. Good midnight to ya.